Okay, so I know there are a lot of you out there who are very concerned about this iOS 14 update and what it's gonna mean for your Facebook ads experience. Especially those of you who are like me and are using Facebook ads as the sole way to drive traffic to your Spotify profile to grow your career as an artist. I hear you. So today, we are going to walk through every step you need to take to ensure that your Facebook ad experience is set up to comply with all of the new rules and regulations that Facebook has instituted as a result of this iOS 14 update. So let's get into it. What's up, guys? It's Tom. Welcome back to the lab and welcome back to my life. So Facebook has been hitting us pretty hard with all of these things about iOS 14. Dare I say they have been scaring us to death. <laughs> but there are some things that we can do. Finally, we have like a list of tasks that they have included in the ad platform, steps that we can take to ensure that we are prepared for this iOS 14 change. And there are things that we can do to make sure that our ads don't get turned off and that everything continues to function as it always has. Now, before we dig into this, I want to remind you that every Friday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, we go live right here on the YouTube channel. We talk about music marketing, business, branding, all kinds of stuff. It's me. There's a ton of other people in the community who come and join. Lots of great questions, lots of great discourse, people answering questions back and forth in the comments section. And you have an opportunity to ask me directly if you have anything that you're concerned about or curious about or just want to know more about. I hope you'll come and join us this Friday this Friday's live stream is already scheduled in my channel. So if you want to go check that out and set a reminder so that you don't miss it, I would love to see you there. Getting into making sure your Facebook ads are compliant with the iOS 14 update. When you first log into Facebook ads now, you are going to see an additional tab on the left side of your ad manager that says Resource Center. And if you click on this Resource Center tab, it's going to take you to this screen and it's going to have a list of tasks on the bottom left here that's going to tell you everything you need to do to set yourself up for success for this iOS 14 change. It's also got another column on the right that has updates and information about how iOS 14 changes may impact your ad account. For today, we're going to focus on this left column, tasks. These are all the things that we have power and control over to change and adjust to make sure that we're ready to go. Now, before we dig into all of these, you are going to need one thing for this video to work for you. You have to have a website address. You don't have to have a website hosted visible anywhere, but you do have to own the URL. So if you don't own the URL, you may wanna pause this video and go to a domain registrar like Google Domains, that's what I use, or GoDaddy or whatever else, and reserve your official web address for yourself as an artist. Or you can watch this whole video through and keep it in mind for reference so that you can learn kind of what you need to do, then go get your domain and then come back and watch it again as a step-by-step -step walkthrough and then follow along. I recommend doing it that way. Now, assuming you have your website URL, you're gonna go to the left side here and you're gonna go under tasks. And the first task that we have is review pixels that will no longer have available conversion events. So if we click review pixels, the next page we are taken to is this one that has web event configurations. And as you can see on the left side, I have all of the domains that are sending pixel data from my Facebook pixel to my Facebook ad manager. The two we're concerned about are fanlink.to, which is Toned In's official link that you use to link to their landing pages for their service, which is the service that I use for every landing page for all of my campaigns. And then tomdupreethe3rd.com, which is my domain for myself as an artist, business owner, YouTuber, all, whatever, all the stuff that I do. So starting with the fanlink.to domain, you can see that it says this domain is owned by another business. And if we hover over the little I here, we'll get a little bit more information about it. And this is what it says. Domain owned by another business. This domain is owned by another business, meaning another business has control to edit events configured on this domain. Contact domain owner for assistance. We're not going to contact anybody because we don't need to. And I'll get to that in a minute. Now, if we go down to my domain, tomdupreethe3rd.com, and this is where your domain is going to show up, and we click verify domain, we are taken here into our business settings menu. You can also get here by going to the nine dots in the top left of your business manager or your ad manager, whichever panel you're in at the time, and you can select business settings. 
And when you get to business settings, you go down to brand safety and select domains. And that'll take you here as well. So once we're here, now we can see that we have some instructions for verifying our domain. So to do anything, we've got to verify the domain that we own, basically saying, hey, it's me. I own this. And when I advertise on this domain, it is me advertising on it. Also, this gives you control over who can do what with your domain name with their ads. And I'll dig into that a little bit more in a minute. That is what is very applicable to toned in or whatever other landing page generator you are using. This is a super important thing and we're gonna to get to it, I promise you. So first of all, we've got to verify our domain and it's got a list of instructions here. It says, here are the basic steps. Log into your domain registrar and visit the DNS record section. Add this TXT record to your DNS configuration. Add et in the host field if your domain host requires it. Wait until your DNS configuration changes have spread across your website's domain servers. This may take up to 72 hours then click verify. And Facebook has given us a code. And so what we're gonna do is copy this code and go follow the instructions. So I use Google domains. So what we're gonna do is copy that code and we're gonna go to Google domains. On the left side, you're gonna go to DNS. And in your domain registrar, you're gonna need to find this panel that says DNS. So once you go to DNS, you're gonna go to custom resource records. On Google domains, it looks like this. For your domain registrar, it may look a little different, but it's gonna be basically the same thing. And we're gonna create a new custom record. We're gonna put at in the name field. It's already populated here for me, but if it's not, put that there. On the drop down here, we're gonna to scroll to the bottom and select TXT. We're gonna leave one hour in here in the window. That's the time it's gonna take for the changes to take effect. And then we're going to paste the Facebook text that they gave us into this field and we're gonna click add. And once we've clicked add, we have to wait for the change to take effect. And as it said, it may take up to 72 hours. For me, it took about 10 minutes. So odds are it's gonna happen pretty quickly, but you're gonna have to wait a second for it to actually go through. Now, once it's gone through, you're gonna go back to this same page in your Facebook ad manager in the business settings section, and you're gonna click verify. And once it's verified, you will end up with something like this. Tom Dupree III is verified, big green check mark. So once we verified our domain, you're gonna reload the page. And once you've reloaded the page, you're gonna see that the verification pending is no longer underneath your domain. We also have three columns here that we can select from. We have partners, connected assets, and domain access. So we wanna to go to the domain access tab because this is where we're gonna learn about how we can continue to use Toned In or Feature FM or Hyped It or whatever we're using for our landing page. And it's gonna tell us exactly kind of what this looks like. So going to domain access under manage ad link editing, it says control which third party ads can edit links to your domain. Anyone with a Facebook page can create an ad that includes a link to your domain. Anyone with a Facebook page can create an ad that includes a link to your domain. Other people can use tomdupreethe3rd.com in their ads. In this link editing area, helps me to identify what they can and can't do with that link. Conversely, that means I can use links from other businesses in my ads, including, you guessed it, toned in fanlink.to links. Facebook is making it pretty clear here, says to me, you can still use third-party links in your ads. This gives me hope that everything's going to be okay. Moving on under what is ad link editing, again, it says anyone with a Facebook page can create an ad that includes a link to your domain. By default, the person creating the ad can edit the descriptive content associated with the link, such as the title, description, or image. We call this link editing. So when you verify your domain with Facebook, you are taking ownership of that domain and dictating what can and cannot be done with your domain, including certain conversion events that can be set up on your domain. For us, in sending traffic to Spotify, we use the view content event a lot. Now, fortunately, View content is used on all the toned in pages as well. So they have set up the view content event on their website as well. And that is why we are going to be able to use it on ours. Okay, so now that our domain is verified, we're gonna go back and we're gonna add new conversion events and stick them to our domain so that we can continue to use them in our ads. And this is where we're gonna take the view content event and we're going to attach it to our domain so we can keep using it. So if we go back to the Resources Center tab, we're gonna select Review Available Conversion Events. And once we've selected that, we're gonna end up back here 
at the web event configurations window. And as you can see, our domain, tomdupreethe3rd.com, says domain verified. So that step has been taken, we're good to go there. And when we hover over the little warning triangle, we see at least one event must be configured on a domain to run ad campaigns. So this is like the gate. We have to set up an event, otherwise we can't run any ads. If we click on that, we're greeted with an edit events button. Clicking on that, we can see edit these events, question. It may take up to 48 hours to see results in ads and ad set measurements. And then we've got a whole thing about what iOS 14 is doing, and you're welcome to read that when you get to it, if you like. I'm not gonna read it right now. So once we get through that, we are here at the Edit Web Event Configurations window. And on the right side, this big green button says Add Event. So we're gonna click that. And when we click Add Event, we are greeted with this little drop down menu here. And so we can select our pixel, and then we can go to Choose Event Name. And in this case, I'm gonna select View Content, because that's the one I'm using all the time. We can add more events. Click Add Event, select the pixel. You can add Add to Cart, which is being used in my online store for Shopify. And adding a third one, select the pixel again, and we can do Initiate Checkout. And these three events are events that have already been sent from my pixel. So I only have the option to select from things that my pixel is already using. And then we can order them in whatever order we want. So in this case, I think that the Initiate Checkout uh, function is the most important to what I'm doing. It has the highest dollar value. So, so once we do that, we'll go to the bottom right, we'll click Submit, we'll click Yes, I understand these changes, and we'll click Apply. You've successfully changed event configurations. Now, that's done. We have applied these events to our domain, and we are now free to use them in our ads. So now, once again, we are going to return back to our Events Manager. And once we're back here, our next to-do item is replace ad sets that will be paused. So we've verified our domain, we have added conversion events to the domain, and now we've got to get to work on updating our existing ads to make sure they don't get turned off. So if we select replace ad sets, we're taken back to our ad manager, and it's going to show us the ad sets that we need to change. And now this is where it gets a little bit weird. Uh, you have to change the conversion event, even though we're gonna change it to the same conversion event that we have. So. If we go to our conversion event at the ad set level and select it, then we have to close that out, get rid of the existing conversion event, and we're gonna go back and we're gonna reselect the view content conversion event again. And this is gonna take the quote, new view content conversion event that we have on our now existing verified domain and apply it to this ad set. So you're kind of redoing the same thing, but this is how we follow the rules that Facebook has put forth for us. And now, yet again, we are going to return to our resources center. And now that we've done these two tasks, we're gonna mark them as complete. And then the last thing that we've got here is update your attribution window for impacted automated rules. Now, I don't have any automated rules, maybe you do. If you do, you're gonna to need to go through this. For me, I didn't have any, so I just went ahead and marked this one as complete. And that brings us to our final step. We're almost there. Okay, we've verified our domain, We've added our conversion events and we have updated our existing ad sets with our new conversion event. So everything's working great. The last thing we've got to do is update the actual ads themselves that are currently running. So if we go back to our resources center, we've got another tab that has appeared that says review ads that will be paused. If we select review ads, it's going to take us to this list of ads that it's going to tell us are going to be paused if we don't update them. So we'll go to the first one here and we'll select edit. When we scroll down, you can see that there's a little warning sign here and it says all domains need to be associated with a pixel event pair and an ad. The pixel event you selected is associated with at least one domain, but this ad doesn't have a domain selected. Ads without domains will be paused unless you select a domain. So when we click the drop down, we have access to our domain. So if I select that, now we are greeted with this. This domain doesn't match your website URL. Make sure this domain is where conversions take place. But if you'll notice, the icon has changed from a warning sign to a little light bulb. This is not nearly as scary as the gigantic yellow warning sign that we had before. So we are going to hit publish on this. Even though the link that we have in the ad is still the fanlink.to link that comes from Toned In. And if I go to all these other ads that I've got running right now, like we'll go up to this one. 
you can see that I've already updated these and added my website URL in there. And it still has this domain doesn't match and they continue to work. They've worked ever since I updated them. And I even tested the events in the event test tool with my toned in landing pages. And my pixel is still sending view content events from those landing pages. So my theory is this, because we have the view content event installed on our URL, and toned in has the view content event installed on their URL, we are able to use the view content event with their URL because they went through the same process that we just went through in verifying their domain and adding conversion events to their domains that can be used. So as long as we use one of the conversion events that is available on their domain, we can use their domain. Because as we saw before, Facebook says that other businesses are going to use your URL and that's why we want to control what they can do with it. That's what toned in has done. That's what hyped it is probably doing feature FM, whoever else. So as long as we have the view content event, we can use that with toned in links. Now in the event that this changes, I will make an update video about this. If for some reason, Facebook decides that they want to go back on what they have written here in the ad manager and we can't use toned in or hyped it or whatever else anymore, then I'll make a follow-up video about how to make further adjustments so that we can continue to use those services. I don't know about hyped it or feature FM or several others, but I do know that you can use your own domain URL with toned in. You just have to pay for it. So again, if it changes, I'll make an update video. But if you follow these steps in this video, everything still works just fine. Now, before I let you go, I want to remind you to please subscribe to the channel, like this video if you're feeling it, share it with your friends if you really dig it. And if you do subscribe, make sure you turn on notifications so they don't miss any videos in the future. Now at the end here, got some stuff you can check out. And as always, I appreciate you being here and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.